Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at an often forgotten feature in Illustrator that allows you to quickly and easily get some color concepts for your design. Actually this, this uh, episode is courtesy of one of my viewers who actually asked me a question. They were like, well first of all when's the next episode coming out? And then they were like, well, I asked them, well, what do you want help on? And they said, just working with color inside of Illustrator. So it reminded me about all the color features in Illustrator and actually one that I hadn't, I don't think I've ever recorded an episode for. So this is not a new feature. It's actually, I think it came out in Illustrator CS3, but let's take a look. So uh, I'm in Illustrator uh, CS5 and we're just going to go ahead and create a new document. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my document a letter size document and we'll just go ahead and make it wide and it doesn't really matter, it's just a sample, but make whatever you want. And the idea here is that I'm about to start a logo design. However, I don't have any colors in mind. As a matter of fact, I'm really bad at picking colors. So just for the sake of simplicity, let's grab our ellipse tool. We're going to hold down the shift key. We're going to drag out one circle. And we'll just go ahead and flip the colors so that it has a black fill with a white stroke, which we're going to change to none. And we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that circle. We'll grab our, um, our selection tool, hold down the shift key and the option key or alt key on Windows. And when we drag it, we can then duplicate it. So you have to let go of the keys each time, otherwise it thinks you're trying to deselect it. So I have my three exact perfect circles duplicated onto the page. So there's one, two, and three. Now the challenge becomes what colors do I want this logo to take on? And of course we give you some default swatches here in Illustrator so I can grab a color there and a color there and a color there and they kind of look okay but those are the same colors anybody would pick. Then I could start going down here to the color picker and just really start getting some colors, but I'm just not good at picking colors that go good together. That's the problem. So there's a feature designed specifically for me. <laughs> it's called the color guide and it's right here. So the color guide, if you don't have it uh, out or if it's not on your tools, just go up to the window menu and grab the color guide and that will pop it out. Now the idea behind the color guide is that it, it's populated by default with a series of swatches that are designed to look good together. So that's the idea is that if you pick one of these groups, any color in that group will look good with another color in that group. So you can't go wrong as far as do these colors match. If you're one of those that, you know, as a child you were having a hard time matching your clothes, this would be the tool for you. So, making jokes, but this is really, really, really a great thing for people like me that just get stuck visually. I mean, I know what it looks, I know if it looks good if, if I see it, but I just don't know what colors to start with. So, I'm just going to pick one of these groups at random. Uh, actually, I like the, uh, well, let's go with, hmm, see, I'm even having a hard time picking a group. Let's go with uh, this one. All right, so now that I've got my group, I can go ahead and pick any of the swatches in that group. So I can select a circle, pick a swatch there, select a circle, pick a swatch there. And technically, those colors should look good together. But that doesn't mean I like them. Just because they look, you know, just because they match doesn't mean they're my favorite color. So I could start, you know, trying different variations, maybe go with that color instead of the brown, and maybe... Uh, that darker blue instead of the light. But you know what? I'm kind of like stuck. I just, again, this is back to me just not knowing what colors I really want until I see them. And I don't really have time to sit here experimenting by picking different ones. So here's the best thing I love about Color Guide. Let's go ahead and select all three. And at the very bottom, there's an edit or apply colors at the bottom of the panel. And this is where all the magic happens. When you select this, it will it may change your colors because what it does is it picked your current colors and it kind of threw them into some new colors. And again, don't worry about that because you're going to make changes anyway. So you could pick another group. You still have access to your groups here. But I'm going to go in and say edit 
and this is my favorite thing about this. It brings up a color wheel, but more importantly, it brings up a color wheel with the three selected current colors, and it allows me to turn that wheel to make changes based on the relationships of those colors. So in other words, the wheel is never going to let me pick something that's not in a good relationship, but I can go in and just keep turning this to my heart's content until I find something I want. Now I can also alter it this way. So I can drag above and around, and I can just keep pulling this around until I get a combination that is more appealing to my eye. And, I, and also, just by seeing the relationships here, it kind of helps me uh, with maybe a better relationship of colors than I originally picked because I see the whole spectrum or whole wheel of colors to choose from. All right, so we're kind of getting close to what I might want. Maybe something along that line. We'll pull that one in a bit. And maybe something like that for this logo. But the idea here is that I was able to pick some colors to start with and then visually turn the dial, keeping colors in relations in relationship until I found something that was more appeasing to my eye. So we click OK, and those are your new three colors. So that's it, the color guide. And again, you can add your own color groups. You can uh, you know, edit the colors anytime you want. You can actually go in, and here, let's go in and check one more thing here. We can actually go in and we can tell it what, how many color of a job we're doing. So like, for example, if you had this multicolor job and uh, the customer decided all of a sudden, no, it has to be only two or three colors, then you can go in and say, you know what, this job needs to come down to a two-color job instead of a, a, a process job. And it will go ahead and convert the colors for you. You can also go in and pick, um, uh, again, the different groups and presets of those two and three and one, two and three color jobs. So we can go ahead and choose that and we can tell it what Pantone library, for example, to use. So maybe I'm going to print this with solid coded and it's going to be a three color job and it will go ahead and match the colors to their closest Pantone equivalents. So very, very powerful features here for designers to kind of get started and then go in and make changes based on uh, their eyes or based on having to really define it to be three specific colors or uh, colors in a specific group or range based on a library that you chose. So it's now it's kind of keeping that into that Pantone range that we uh, asked for, and it will not let me pick anything that's not a specific Pantone color. So very cool, very powerful feature. Take advantage of the color guide. Go experiment. You can even pick uh, a multicolor design and bring up the color guide and work with the colors in that design that you already started. That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.